Today, all participants committed to refrain from interference in the armed conflict or the internal affairs of Libya. Some progress, but no end to the civil war after a Sunday summit in Berlin. Hello, I'm Arnand Naidu, and this is The Heat. United Nations-sponsored talks on the Libyan conflict were held over the weekend. Leaders from a dozen countries pledged to stop interfering and strengthen an arms embargo, but no agreement was reached on a ceasefire. The North African country has been engulfed in civil war for nearly a decade. We get more now from CGTN's Ira Spitzer. Some of the world's most powerful figures descended on Berlin. The goal to push forward stalled peace talks among Libya's rival factions. German Chancellor Angela Merkel said she'd extracted commitments to reduce the flow of weapons into the country. We were able to see that everyone is in agreement that the weapons embargo needs to be respected and the weapons embargo needs to be more strictly controlled than has happened in the past. The North African country has become a flashpoint for competing interests from outside forces. Turkey has supported the UN-backed government, which controls the capital Tripoli and little else. But Russia, the United Arab Emirates and Egypt back rebels led by General Khalifa Haftar. Rich in oil and gas resources and a hub for irregular migrant flows to Europe, Libya is strategically important for a number of countries. Conference organizers said that there was a will to find a solution. I cannot stress enough the summit's conclusion that there is no military solution to the conflict in Libya. All participants have mentioned it several times during the meeting. Ahead of the talks, European leaders signaled that they were willing to increase engagement. Well, if there is a ceasefire, yes, of course, there's a case for us doing what we do very well, which is uh, sending people, experts, to, to monitor the ceasefire. I don't see uh, any ceasefire at the moment. That's what we're arguing for today. But the elusive ceasefire wasn't agreed to in Berlin, just as it wasn't in Moscow last week. And the two rival factions didn't even meet face to face. With the recent escalations, there are worries time could be running out for a peaceful solution. Iris Bitzer, CGTN, Berlin. There's much to talk about. Let's get to our panel. Mustafa Fetouri joins us from Paris. He's a Libyan academic and award-winning journalist. With us from Istanbul is Mete Sohtaoglu. He's a Middle East and North Africa affairs analyst. Sarah Kira is in Cairo. She heads the European North African Center for Research. And with us here in Washington in our studio is Hafed El Gawel. He's a senior fellow at Johns Hopkins University's Foreign Policy Institute. Thank you to all of you for being with us. Hafed, let's start right here in the studio and let's start with the basics. How did we get here? It's a long story, but let's start since this war. I think it, that makes it a little bit easier. Um, in mid-April uh, last year, um, the UN and Libyan um, factions from all over the place were supposed to meet in the city of Ghat in, in Libya uh, to work out an agreement, a uh, political agreement. Ten days before that, on the 4th, uh, General Haftar, who was supposed to also participate in this agreement, mounted a sudden attack. He is attack. one of the factions in this. Yeah, he's, right. he's the main mm -hmm. uh, uh, sort of uh, military commander that is um, attacking the government in Tripoli. Anyway, so he attacked suddenly on the 4th uh, of April, aborting the whole peace process that uh, the UN was working on, and he has refused to stop for the last 10 months since April. He's been attacking Tripoli, causing an enormous amount of damage. Um, he has been supported uh, consistently by um, planes from, from the United Arab Emirates, in some areas also Egypt. He had uh, among his troops or his forces uh, mercenaries, uh, as reports came out from Sudan, from Chad, and then later on in the last few months from Russia, mm -hmm. the Wagner Group, as you remember. Yeah. Um, and he is until today refusing to be the one signing for uh, 
uh, a ceasefire. And just to be clear, these divisions in Libya, uh, they began after the overthrow of Muammar Gaddafi. Correct. And they've, been, they've persisted ever since. Pre precisely. I mean, as, as you remember, the revolt against Gaddafi was uh, yeah. not organized in any sense. So everybody was participating, and then you, you formed a lot of these uh, armed groups throughout the country that began uh, competing yeah. for power and influence and money. And then some of them now are, are collecting themselves under various uh, uh, umbrellas. Haftar is one of those large yeah. umbrellas that includes a lot of these former armed groups. Right. Mete, as uh, Hafa just told us, a lot of these groups are now collecting themselves under different umbrellas. Uh, it's grown into a very complex proxy war right now. We have Russia and China, or rather Russia and Turkey, on opposite sides of the conflict. Uh, General Khalifa Haftar, that Hafed referred to, he's the commander of the Libyan National Army. He's backed by the United Arab Emirates, among other countries, Egypt, uh, Jordan, and Russian mercenaries as well, as we heard. Uh, in Tripoli, the internationally recognized government is led by Fayez al-Saraj. Um, there's very deep enmity between these two leaders. In fact, they refuse to be even in the same room uh, during these talks in Berlin. Um, do you think they can put aside their differences? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, they will not meet uh, next week, for example. Uh, there will be a secret meeting about uh, Libya. Uh, but uh, one thing uh, I should uh, remember uh, all of you, uh, there, there, there was a health clinic in Berlin, uh, but uh, who is the doctors, Russia or Turkey? Uh, I think health clinic is in Berlin, but the doctors are uh, Russia and Turkey because uh, Turkey's approach or Russia's approach uh, is very different from the European countries. For example, you told that uh, you, told, you, you were talking about the Muammar Gaddafi. I don't think so. Putin did not forget the killing of uh, or toppling the uh, Gaddafi uh, by uh, NATO. So uh, I, I think Putin uh, did not forget this issue. Uh, but uh, the approach is very different. The Libyan issue is different because uh, this uh, this is not the uh, problem about uh, Saraj or uh, Haftar. Uh, the main problem is European countries who is burning Libya and they are extinguishing now the fire. They are burning uh, the uh, Libya uh, country uh, and now they are uh, trying to sit a chair uh, around the table and uh, now they are trying to uh, extinguish the fire. Uh, because of uh, this, uh, first of all, uh, beside Haftar or El Sarraj, uh, the main problem is uh, they want uh, to solve their problems in the Mediterranean and also in Libya uh, for each other. Uh, that's the main problem. Uh, because uh, in uh, Libya, we saw too many groups arming by France and the other countries, uh, Arabic Emirates, uh, and fighters came from, uh, as you said, uh, from Sudan, Egypt, and the other countries. But uh, Turkey's uh, approach is very different. Uh, to, uh, because of this, Turkey wants to seal its maritime uh, deal with the uh, legitimate government. Okay, let me get the view of Mustafa on that. Mustafa, what we're hearing here is that at its core, the problem is, or are European countries? Well, more or less, that's true. But before I go into a little bit of details into that question, uh, answering that question, I would just uh, point out that the government of national accord in, in, in Libya, which was uh, in Tripoli, I'm sorry, which was imposed by the United Nations and the superpowers and the Libyans without actually consulting them, uh, is also supported by uh, Turkey, Qatar, and different, and two uh, very dangerous sets of uh, armed groups, or terrorists, if you like. The first set of the local terrorists that are known to us Libyans inside the country, and uh, the second set, uh, what Mr. Erdogan is believed to be transferring into Libya from northern Syria, where he is in control. Okay. Now for your question, the, uh, the problem of Libya is uh, as uh, uh, much European as it is a Libyan problem. And we have to remember that in 2011, the, the, the whole thing started in March 2011 when the United Nations, under pressure from the European countries, especially France at the time, passed Resolution 1973 in uh, February, 7, uh, February 17th, uh, March 17th, I'm sorry, 
authorizing all countries capable and willing to intervene in Libya under right. the pretext of uh, uh, protection of, uh, of uh, civilians. Okay. Uh, we got the country destroyed, Gaddafi killed, the, the hundreds of thousands of people displaced inside and uh, uh, abroad, and we ended up with this mess. Okay, Hafed, I will get to you in a moment. I want to bring in Sarah. Sarah, uh, of course, this started almost a decade ago when NATO overthrew the government of Muammar Gaddafi. Now, foreign leaders who were at this conference in Berlin saying that, or they pledged rather, not to interfere in internal Libyan affairs. What do you make of it? Of course, the, the conference in Berlin that took place two days ago uh, is part of the Berlin process or the peace negotiations that cannot bring uh, two leaders of Libya in one room together, as mentioned. Um, but it's still aiming at setting peace in Libya. Uh, the peace process is very essential for all the regional actors and international powers um, in Libya because... Um, as your guests mentioned and you mentioned that Libya comes with a very important strategic importance to a lot of actors in the region. So let's just um, hope for the best and uh, continue on the three points plan uh, brought to the table by the, uh, the UN Special Envoy, Mr. Ghassan Salama, which, uh, uh, which is based on seizing fire, arms embargo, just like mentioned yesterday and national accord between the uh, Libyan counterparts. Yeah. Uh, the conflict is more ideological in my own point of view right. um, between Eastern, the eastern side of Libya and western side. When you say Libya, ideological, what, ideological what, what does that mean? Mm, well, uh, there is the military part in eastern uh, uh, Libya led by General Khalifa Haftar and then the uh, western uh, government or the GNA in Tripoli, uh, led by, uh, let's say, an, uh, a Muslim Brotherhood government, which is, um, which we believe that doesn't believe so much in in the state and and having Libya unified once more. Go ahead, Ahmed. I mean, I, I, this uh, this tired cliche of Muslim Brotherhood is just simply not true. Uh, the, the Muslim Brotherhood yeah. uh, party in, in Libya, like it is in Tunisia or Morocco or even in Turkey, it's just one political party among many. Um, Siraj and his government uh, cannot logically or factually be labeled as Muslim Brotherhood at all. There are various people. But if, if you give me just a second, uh, Anna, and I want to frame uh, this issue about Libya in, with a few anchors. One. One must remember that uh, the person who aborted the peace process is Haftar. And this is not the first time he does that. And he had just uh, re uh, did it again or confirmed his uh, uh, disinterest in a political process last week in Moscow when him and Siraj were there to sign uh, an, a ceasefire agreement sponsored by Russia and Turkey. Siraj signed or the GNA side and it's very hard to, to, to say Siraj. Siraj is not a dictator in the yeah. sense of Haftar in, in the, but the government let's say as a whole. They signed, he <laughs> left Moscow without signing. Second issue there has to be a very clear understanding and distinction between those who attack and those who defend. You cannot really reach uh, a ceasefire between two parties, one but of them is attacking this, the right, other. But wasn't this Berlin conference meant to get past those blame games? I, and it's yeah. not a blame yeah. because, it, no, I'm talking about it as a practical issue of ceasefire. Yeah. Uh, logically, uh, the only way to stop that is to stop the aggressor yeah. from hitting right. the defender. You cannot ask a defender to stop defending themselves until you stop the attack. Okay. So, in practical terms, if you want to cease fire, you have to convince yeah. Haftar to stop attacking Tripoli. Right. So that's that's a very practical, pragmatic issue. Okay. I want to get to Meta. He want to he, Meta. You want to say something about this? Yeah. Uh, 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 sorry, but uh, they are promoting uh, uh, in Europe some of the people promoting Haftar as a secular force. It's not true uh, because uh, you know uh, there is a Saudi Arabia uh, for, uh, a cleric from Saudi Arabia. Uh, there is a jihadi uh, uh, Methali Salafis. True. Uh, they are jihadi fighters. 
uh, under the umbrella of Haftar. So where can we put here? Is this a secular group? No, uh, it's totally a lie. And promoting Haftar is a secular force. And uh, El Sarraj is an, uh, a member of Ihwan, uh, an Islamic uh, government. That's not true. They yeah. tried to uh, put in uh, Syria. Uh, they're promoting uh, PKK's offshoot, Syrian offshoot as a secular force. But uh, it's enough. Uh, after uh, Syria, yeah. uh, please, uh, nobody wants to uh, believe this uh, PR All right. uh, program. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, don't, don't promote. Uh, Haftar is a secular force. No, no, we're not, we're not, pro yeah, we're not uh, promoting anyone. We, uh, government. Yeah, we're trying, That's we're not, true. Yeah, okay, we're not promoting That's anyone. We're trying to get the views of everybody. Sarah, He's I want to get your... By yeah, the way. Sarah, He's a warlord, by Okay, Sarah, I want to get your response very quickly to what you've there, heard. Are we perhaps too much giving too much credit life. to uh, the Muslim Brotherhood here? Well, first of all, here is the ideological division we're witnessing right now here in this panel discussion Stunted. because we're talking about the National Army of Libya under yeah. the command of a general, Libyan general. And we're talking about another government within the failed state now that we don't want it to be a failed state anymore, uh, defending, defending itself using jihadists from Syria, yeah. calling on Turkey to defend itself against with, with its all own due respect. national okay, army. One moment. That doesn't uh, make a, a, a lot of sense. No, no, you right, are talking right. about okay. the unverified <laughs> footage. No, no, you are talking about the unverified footage. Mete, uh, one I'm moment. I've got to bring some of the other guests in. Any joke location? Okay, Mete, I've got to bring one of the other guests in. Mustafa, I want to get to you. Uh, the United Nations uh, Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, uh, he reiterated at this conference in Berlin that there is no military solution to this conflict in Libya. Let's listen to a little of what he had to say. Let's watch. First, I cannot stress enough the summit's conclusion that there is no military solution to the conflict in Libya. All participants have mentioned it several times during the meeting, even those that are more directly involved in the conflict itself. And uh, uh, one central question is that all the participants today committed uh, to support the ceasefire and committed to uh, put pressure on the parties to the conflict for a full ceasefire to be reached. So Mustafa, though we heard it, uh, all sides recognize that there's no military solution to it, uh, that there has to be a, a ceasefire, but we have none of that. So where does this leave us? Well, uh, if you ask me, is there a military solution or not for the crisis in Libya, I would say Mr. Guterres is free to say whatever he likes with all due respect, but I personally believe there is no other solution to the uh, long-term solution to the conflict in Libya but the military solution. There is the political, political solution will never work in the way I know my country. I, am, I, I live most of my time in Libya. I know Libya very well, inside out. So I know what I'm talking about. I, I just have to uh, go back a little bit to a couple of points. We have to remember when we yeah. discuss the government of national accord and Tripoli GNA that this is like a, a caretaker government was supposed to be serving for one year, transitional period of one year, to organize a couple of things like uh, drafting the constitution and yeah. elections and, and then go away. But, but the, w what we see now is something different. Uh, we are in the fourth year. The last segment I would like to add here, the last point, uh, yeah. actually, we have to remember that most of the militias that are claiming to be under the umbrella of uh, GNA and Tripoli, they totally refused the government in the beginning, the GNA government, yeah. and they did not let it come into Tripoli for an entire three months, from December All right. to March Mustafa, 2016. Okay. So Mus we Mustafa, have to I, that. I have to ask you this. you saying that this can only be resolved on the battlefield. Are you saying that one side conquers the other side? in a military war, what happens next? Do you expect that one faction that backs the government in Tripoli to just lay down arms? And wouldn't it be an well, occupation by one side over well, the other? We, uh, uh, well, it's not an occupation. This is, this is going to be a civil war. It is a civil war so far. And some, some, somebody, one yeah, side, has okay. to conquer the other. I'm not, talk, I'm not talking specifically about Haftar or the current two right. sides now, as mm -hmm. it is. But, but it must be internal Libyan conflict, and unfortunately, it's very bad, but that's, that's, the, All fact. Right. that's the reality. Okay, Hafed, you want to say something? <laughs> well, there is a lot to say, yeah. but first of all, I, I don't believe there is any ideological difference between the two sides of this. I don't think this is an ideological conflict. 
um, and the demands of both are, are very clearly. Do you believe this can be resolved by a fight to the finish? That's what uh, Haftar and his supporters think. They haven't been able to do it over 10 months. Now it is almost impossible for them to enter Tripoli, given that Turkey is now openly in, uh, involved in the Libya issue. And there has to be a difference between countries that have been supplying uh, arms to Haftar over the last few months and even using their own planes to attack the capital and between a very legitimate and open uh, uh, agreement between two governments like Turkey and Tripoli. No. But it's, uh, it's at the end of the day, at the end, moment, I'm sorry at to at interrupt you. Well, okay. Mr. Mustafa. Mr. Fituri, I, I know yet no. you have a very specific position here in support of a party. I'm talking about facts. I'm not supporting no, I'm either not one. Supporting anybody, but no. but let me let no. me just say that there is a anybody, difference between a public not, agreement. One moment, Mustafa. The, 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 it is a legitimate even government. Even government. Mustafa, you have to hold on a minute. No, I will get no. to you. One moment. Yeah, it is yeah. definitely okay. a legitimate sorry. government if the entire international community no. recognizes it. No, uh, no matter what no, you say. No, it does not have any national. <laughs> and, and, and it came out of an agreement between Libyans and Sherat. I mean, these okay. are facts of history and facts uh, no. on the ground. No. All right. No. Denying the legitimacy no. means that the United Nations and all, the, in, the, including the United States, including Russia, including yeah. France, including everybody around the world, okay. is supporting an illegitimate government, which doesn't make sense to me. Right. If it's okay. recognized, right. it is exactly. legitimate. Okay. 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 Let me That's get to true. Sarah. I've got to bring in I Sarah. One moment, you. Mustafa. I've got to bring in Can Sarah. I Sarah. I will. I will okay. get to you in a moment, Sarah. Uh, how would the, how would a, you know the the uh, conference in Berlin talked about a ceasefire, and then these two sides getting together to discuss their differences? How would that work? I mean, if you have a ceasefire, you got to have some kind of enforcement mechanism. I mean, they did broach the subject of peacekeeping troops being sent to Libya. How would it work? Well, that was mentioned by the German uh, Chancellor, uh, Angela Merkel. She mentioned that there would be a 5 plus 5 uh, committee uh, uh, consisting of uh, five uh, military officials from both sides to witness the truth. So if we're going to talk about constructive peace today in Libya, so uh, without any interference or foreign interference or without discussing the legitimacy of the uh, GNA government, um, even though it should have control on its borders and it should have legitimacy um, in those peace talks. Because yesterday, international and regional powers agreed that there would be truth, uh, truth in Libya and ceasefire and arms embargo. So this would uh, take out of the equation the foreign powers, either Turkey or any other regional or, 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 yeah. or, or uh, superpower taking, um, taking an active role in, uh, in Libya, and it brings us back to peace. So if we're discussing yeah. peace, so we, ha we do have a constructive start. If we're discussing the legitimacy of the government, that's another issue. Right. Uh, Mete, uh, Turkey's... Uh, Turkey's to President uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, he's threatened Commander Khalifa uh, Haftar. Let's uh, listen to part of what the Turkish leader had to say. We will not hesitate to teach a deserved lesson to coup leader Haftar if he continues his attacks on the country's legitimate administration and our brothers in Libya. So, Mete, that's very tough language there from uh, the Turkish president. Why is Turkey so invested in this conflict in Libya? Uh, because uh, there were uh, nearly one million uh, Turkish origin Libyan citizens uh, from the uh, Ottoman era. Oh, so uh, it's historical. <laughs> but uh, I should say to you, uh, what are laughing? It's true. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Do you know the first prime minister of the <laughs> Libya is uh, Turkish origin? Sadullah Köroğlu. Uh, uh, but that I, doesn't I should make continue. Him, uh, Mustafa, uh, I will get to you, Mustafa. Uh, Ankara, uh, Ankara is not dreaming uh, an Ottoman era map, and uh, they are not dreaming an uh, Ottoman uh, era. Uh, their country, Ankara, is defending uh, their rights in the Mediterranean Sea. The European countries wants to uh, bypass uh, the rights uh, of Turkey in the Mediterranean with Ismail's project. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, Ankara's approach is uh, very different uh, uh, the uh, other uh, European countries. For example, I should uh, remember uh, one thing. 
for example, uh, Libyan uh, millions of uh, billions of yeah. uh, Libyan money sized by uh, European countries under the United Nations. So Haftar wants force and okay. want to use this money for himself. He wants uh, power yeah. because uh, uh, once uh, upon a time, uh, in the solution process, uh, the, uh, the uh, Minister of Defense, Defense Ministry offered to him. He regret. Okay. He wants power and uh, he wants to be number one in, in Libya. But uh, I should, uh, of, of course, again, uh, will, uh, will be to yeah. uh, Turkey's military presence is not combat forces. There is a lot of uh, milit uh, agreements in the uh, titles, right. economics, financial, and military. All right, Turkey let me... Uh, training, po uh, police forces, military forces. Yeah. But for now, so far, the, Turkey did not set combat forces. But if Haftar violates the uh, okay. ceasefire... Uh, I, Okay, Mete, I'm of running out of time. I talked to you. Have been uh, right. in uh, Berlin, but the doctors is Russia and okay. Turkey. Okay, I am running out of time, Mete. I want to I want to go very quickly to Mustafa. Respond. I want to go very quickly to Mustafa to get uh, Mustafa your response to what you've heard, and please keep it short. Yeah, very short. Uh, just uh, our friend in the studio with you. I would ask, uh, recommend to him that he goes back and read the uh, Skherat Agreement, Article Number Four. What it says? It says. The GNA must, must first get the vote of confidence in the parliament first before, before it becomes legitimate. That's one thing. The other okay. thing, I agree with much of the, what the, the guy from Turkey said yeah. about the, the reasoning of Mr. Erdogan. Yeah. But I wonder, really wonder why Mr. Erdogan, yeah. stay, I mean, a head of state turned himself into a spokesman for a bunch all right, of, uh, we're going to have to keep it short, Mustafa. In Tripoli. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not supporting anybody, by yeah. the way, yeah. on this, in this current conflict. All right, Hafed, I've got 20 okay, seconds. A very quick here. response from you. <laughs> I, well, I, you know, I think you, you, you just seen that everybody, depending on the capital they're in, uh, they're sponsoring their own uh, government's policy in Libya yeah. in their own interest. And we shouldn't forget there are divisions in Europe as well. Uh, yeah, a lot, and, and that's, uh, that's why, okay. I mean, uh, but I think, honestly, uh, right now, yeah. the fact that Turkey has, as you uh, showed, yeah. has this public and strong commitment is what's getting everybody interested now in Libya, and that also puts an end to Haftar's uh, uh, dreams and anybody's dreams that there is a, uh, that there is a military solution in Libya. Nobody's going to fight Turkey. Okay, that's the bottom line. <laughs> we are going to have to leave it there. Thanks to all of you for being part of the show. That's it for this edition of The Heat. I'm Arun Naidu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching. This is a show for people who love exploring, discovering, and experiencing life stories. A diverse, rich, and beautiful land. Latin America is not only about poverty, or crime, or riots. We want to set the record straight. With in-depth reporting and compelling stories. Like the UN living in Haiti, the reinvention of Cuba, and the Peace Treaty in Colombia will introduce you to extraordinary people like this woman in Bolivia taking back their heritage and independence. A fantastic 14-year-old who created a bank to help kids keeping them off the streets. Entrepreneurs who are making a real difference every day. This is truly nature's paradise. It will take you to the biggest rainforest in the world, the driest desert the Andes Mountains, the blue water of the Caribbean, the Galapagos Islands, Patagonia, Easter Island, fantastic places that are only in Latin America. Watch America's Now. You'll get a better understanding of our world, our current times, and our human spirit. America's Now, only on CGTN. The nature of business is to bring value. Business activities in Europe, Asia, and the U.S. reach consumers globally. Trade, manufacturing, energy, 
high tech, real estate, consumption. We give an expanded view on global business and how it covers, influences, or relates to the whole world. Global Business, only on CGTN.